Hello friends, welcome to session 5 on OpenShift Container Management Training. This is on create custom container images. Last two sessions I demonstrated and I explained how to create images using docker file based on existing images. In this session, we will understand the depth of the docker file, the build instructions which we put into docker file and we will create an image without using any base image and we will run it. So this is uh, uh, the last session in the part about managing containers or containers to containerized applications because container management image management is prerequisite for OpenShift. So let's start. Learning objective is designed and code a docker file to build a custom container image. How it works? We use a docker file for an application A where we have source code repository, we write our source code, we build it using docker build command. Docker image, docker engine is running on the machine. We build and we come out with a container A image. We push this image to container registry, docker container image registry and then host 2 where we want to run this application we pull the image and run the dockerized or containerized application like container A running, container B running, container C running. If required on the host machine we can search the required images. What happens if we make changes or if we update our image? Let's say, take an example we have an application app A which includes the binaries and libraries and let's take it as base container image. When we add our own layer, we modify this container image, we come out with the modified container A dash and then we continue adding that and we may have another modifi modified version A double dash. We push this modified version to the registry and the updates are available as an extension or additional part. The host A wants to upgrade to A double dash request for update. The big thing, the important point here is he only get the differences. He gets only the differences. So therefore, after this modified or the changes are pulled from the registry, the Docker engine will have now the running container which is a double dash and this is the only updated part which was pulled so existing part which was already there that is not affected only this part is pulled which was actually nothing but this modified version so we pull only this part so only this part is pulled and the modified container a new container is running in a double dash that's how quick how fast that's the reason people say that container running containers and containerized applications is quite a fast application, quite a fast concept. Building an image from a Docker file using an uh, S2I that is source to image builder to create an application image simplifies the build process as the builder does all the hard work for you. Although you can override the source to image build and deployment process for an application, the extent of the customization you can make is restricted. For example, you cannot install additional operating system packages or run any action that require root privileges. In order to have full control over how the image is built and application run, you need to use Docker build strategy. What is the Docker build strategy? The Docker build strategy takes the instructions from the Docker file and uses them to construct a container image. 
the docker file and associated files required to construct the image needs to be in a hosted source code repository accessible to the OpenShift cluster where you perform the builds. This strategy can be used to construct an application image or S2I builder image. The building of the image can also be linked via image triggers to any build or deployment dependent on the image. An update to the image will therefore trigger the subsequent builds and deployments automating your workflow. The docker file, the text document that contains all the commands a user could call on the command line to assemble an image. How to run the commands, add files or directories to the image, create environment variables for the image, what process to run when the launching the container, all these things you put into the docker file and results from docker file is docker image. And this was the example which I explained in the previous uh, session. Just to understand from Alpine latest, install Python and pip, upgrade pip and then copy the files to the image from the current directory and run pip to build the image or to install the required uh, dependencies based on the requirements file which we copied. So this is what we learned, this is what we did in our previous session. So, so basically our objective is not to explain this file but to, to explain all the commands which you can put into this file. So instructions on how to build a docker image looks very similar to native commands important to optimize your docker file. Now our focus is the instructions in the docker file. The from instruction. From is the first item in the docker file. It specifies a parent image that your image will start from. You specify the image using image name colon tag name format. For example from Ubuntu 18.04. For instance, to use an image called TSP demo with the tag v1 from Sang1 account, you probably use from Sang1 TSP demo colon v1. You can also use from scratch. If you are not using any base image, if you are not uh, building your image based on existing image, you can use from scratch and this is what we are going to do. So from scratch to indicate that your image should not have a parent image. The scratch image is a pseudo image that indicate that you want to start without a parent image. Then we have label instruction. The label provides the ability to add key value metadata to the image. The label instruction can be used many times within a single docker file like label key is equal to value. Label key, key 1 is equal to value 1, key 2 is equal to value 2. The add instruction. The add is a way to copy file from the local file system, a remote URL or a local compressed archive file to a location within the image file system like add, source and destination. So from local or archive or from the current directory from wherever you want to the image file system where your image will be based on. So source and destination. The source in this case can be referred to for example a local file or a directory within the build context or a remote URL. Then we have copy instruction. The copy in syntax mirrors that of add like copy, source, destination. The copy command can also take from, this is a very interesting argument, to use multi-stage builds. We have a separate session on multi-stage build. We are going to look at this also. There will be another session on this multi-stage builds. The copy instructions look incredibly similar to add instruction at the first glance and overlap in purpose. But there is a difference. The difference is that copy only works with local files and provides no automatic archive extractions whereas add gives you more flexibility and extraction from the archive file and you can also use a remote URL with add. With copy you cannot do that. Then we have env instruction and the expose instructions. The env is used to set an environment variable during the build 
and run stages of the image. For example, A and V, key is equal to key value or key is equal to value and the expose is the port number which we want to expose. The expose instruction communicate which port the container services are listening on like port or port followed by the uh, protocol like port TCP or port UDP what kind of port you are you going to use the run instruction the run will execute the statements given to it within the image file system environment using the build process this is the primary mechanism for making changes to build your image it can run any command available within the image file system for example, you can simply run and follow by the command. Another way to run is run the command that is executable path and the arguments. The user instruction. User control what user and optionally group. Commands are executed as in the image environment. This can affect both the build and the runtime processes as every subsequent command that is run in the container environment like run or CMD or environment entry point will be executed by the provided user. So user, username or ID colon group name or group ID. This is the way you can specify in uh, as what user you want to execute the commands. The volume instruction. The volume is responsible for creating mount points within the container image file system for mounting external volumes from the host or other locations. The syntax of volume instruction can take a series of strings separated by space or a JSON array. For instance, these two will produce the same result like volume data volume 1 from the local file system mount it on data volume 2 on the image file system or uh, volume data volume 1 space data volume 2. The work directory instruction. The work directory declares the directory context for instructions like run or CMD or entry point or copy and add. It specifies the location on the file system where these commands should be executed. The work directory instruction will automatically create the directory and any parent directory necessary. To declare a work directory, you can use work directory and the file system path. The CMD instruction. The CMD provides the default execution instructions for when a container is run from the image. This is the primary way to specify what should happen when the user execute docker run on your image. Like CMD, ls-al, var log or wc-l or CMD, some full path to executables with parameters or entry point and then command execute on this entry point. So this way you can use uh, CMD instruction. The entry point instruction allows you to configure a container that can be run as an executable by default like entry point ls-al. Using entry point and CMD together if your docker file exclude includes both entry point and a CMD instruction they both must use the exact form. Exact form means replacing the current shell. When both instructions are, are present, entry point will be interpreted as the command and required parameters. The CMD will be interpreted as the default easily overridable parameters. Now let's look at this example. As a simple example, we can uh, imagine imaging a Docker file with from Ubuntu 18.04 entry point ls hyphen uh, ls hyphen al cmd var log by default when the resulting image is run it will execute the command ls hyphen al var log we can change the directory being targeted by providing a parameter when we run that will override the one specified in cmd so for example we can say docker run hyphen it entry cmd that is entry command we want to run and the directory where the command is to be run. Now this is our first application and uh, we are going to create it without using any uh, 
parent image so we are going to create a containerized application from scratch so first thing is we need to install or verify required packages for building the program and we are going to install these packages and we are going to write a C program to do that let's start so this is installing the packages GCC glib static lib static std compact and uh, lib stdc compact lib stdc is not available okay no problem compact lib and we'll put star whatever package is available all the packages are, are already installed good thing in my case so package installation part complete now what we will do is after installing the packages we will create a folder called tsp scratch and create a file hello.cc inside it alright we will make a directory we will go to the directory we will create a file hello.cc and we are going to write a simple program uh, with a include io stream using namespace std and in the no, uh, function return type integer main and uh, this is a c++ program quite simple c++ program let's uh, create this program so first create the directory mkdir tsp scratch go to the directory tsp scratch and let's create the file hello dot cc and write the code inside the file which is include io stream using namespace std integer main hello welcome to the container the skillpedia and return and we are going to compile it so this is the program for the container hello.cc we created this program now we are going to compile the program with g++ hyphen o hello and static hello.cc and then we are going to test the program so let's compile the program g++ hyphen o hello that is output file will be hello that is executable file and static compilation the program input is hello.cc and now let's try to run it so this is our simple program which will uh, it's nothing but a simple hello executable file and we are going to create a container based on this image so we are going to put this application as a container or in other words we are going to containerize this application so we compiled the program we tested the program we are going to create a program now the docker file inside this and from scratch we are going to add this program and we are going to run this program now let's create the docker file vi docker file and put the content from scratch because we are not going to use any base image add the hello executable to the root directory of the container and then run the command uh, slash hello from the container and let's build this now docker build hyphen t hello and from the current directory and the build is successfully created now we can run the image docker run hello and now see uh, the image the container is running so this application is containerized now and is running as a container so we build the image build the uh, image from the docker file docker build hyphen tag hello and then we run our container using docker run hello and we got the program so next is what you should do is uh, on the website the skillpedia.com this entire comprehensive lab is available to practice the same what I have demonstrated and explain this the practical example if you really want to try you complete the lab assignment or the uh, using the blog given on the website the skillpedia go to the blog section of the skillpedia identify the blog blog on this open shift and then you should be able to complete these lab assignments not only this particular session but also uh, previous session session 3 and session 2 the corresponding examples are available on the website the skillpedia.com under blog so go and visit that website that's what you should practice that's all for this session thank you very much for watching bye bye